It's Stevie Light. And it's finally cooled down. <coughs> At least mostly. It was up close to the hundreds. So, in recording, I chose Wisdom being the better part, better part of Valor, something like that. Yeah, Wisdom the better part of Valor to record tomorrow's, so to speak, um, devotionals this evening. <laughs> so I didn't get caught in the heat of the day. And I have the umbrella down now, so it kind of dissipates some of the heat that's all collected here. And praise the Lord. You know, it's been a good day, even with the heat. And as I look around, I don't think the plants died from it, so I guess I'll be okay. <laughs> Although some of them look like they're, I don't know what they're doing, <laughs> curling. Leaning on Jesus' bosom from daily light. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you. They brought young children to him that he should touch them. And he took them up in his arms, and he put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Jesus called his disciples unto him, and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now three days, and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. A high priest, touched with, his, with the feeling of... A high priest, touched with the feeling of our infirmities. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, but I will not forget thee. The lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them into living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. You know, I think about that living fountains of water, and it's like a rebirth or baptism you know it's like the ultimate spiritual baptism that would be awesome for our spiritual bodies but that's just me i have these funny ideas but you know sometimes we need to lean on the lord you know to just not be so confident in our own strength that we forget and neglect to just relax and trust in the lord you know, to just kind of, if you blow it, to just kind of check out and, you know, check over with where you are with Jesus. And just sit down and, if he says not a word, recognize that he's just holding you. You know, he's not mad at you. God doesn't get mad at you if you sin or if you fail or if you fall down or if you rebel even, you know, to go your own way. Because God will steer you and wants to bring you back because he chose you and he saved you. So... Don't get too carried away when you hear even these people that, you know, are quote-unquote prophets, you know, yelling condemnation or, you know, causing consternation among peoples. You know, just recognize that God is love and that in his love, he desires to bring you to him. And so if you do backslide or fall away for a short period of time, he'll make it bad enough that you'll turn around, you know, and if you don't, well, you'll go to hell. <laughs> Well, that's all that one, didn't it? <laughs> Pretty simple in my book. <laughs> we got to get it together or leave it to the Lord's hands and he'll get it together for us. Because we're saved by grace, not by works of righteousness. Jesus Christ, the righteous, the propitiation for our sins. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that i give thee i will meet with you and i will commune with you from above the mercy seat surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him mercy and truth are met together righteousness and peace have kissed each other if thou lord shouldst mark iniquity o lord who shall stand but there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared that's interesting but there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sin. And that's really what it boils down to is that Jesus did it for you. Jesus did it for me. When I fail him, when I let down my guard, and when I, I don't know, <laughs> personify the sinful flesh that I live in, you know, by whatever means I might, then the reality is I recognize also that I've been given a precious gift of grace and mercy from the Lord that, you know, I can come back to him and, and though I may be downtrodden and sorrowful, you know, he doesn't condemn me. He doesn't, you know, call me into question as far as my heart is at. But he recognizes of the dust that I'm made out of and the weakness that I have. And he consoles me with the fact that he has taken care of all of my sins. And that he is the propitiation or he would not have died for us. And while that's all fancy spiritual terms and words, it just simply means that if you want to be forgiven... You just got to ask. It's that simple. If you ask for forgiveness, just say, Lord, forgive me. And he'll hear you. He'll heal you. He'll help you. And he'll hold you as he takes you on his way, all the way to the end of days. And that's all we could ask for. That's all we should ever want. So don't be afraid to ever come back to Jesus if you feel far away. He's just waiting for you to recognize him and to just lean on his breast again. <laughs> he knows you blow it. And so do you.